<clears throat> all right it's about midday I've been running all day <clears throat> on one regular sun grid tie and uh, we're getting a really nice clear day at the moment you can tell uh, my panels are up in the pushing over 140 sometimes uh, 150 and uh, I've got the sun 250g low voltage one is the one I got connected up right now so that's what's reading on the kilowatt meter here. So <clears throat> let it run a little bit and I'll show you what it looks like compared to just a few minutes ago where I was running all morning basically on the uh, the other sun and then we'll just tell at the end of the day we'll kind of see switching from one to the other if do we notice any specific differences on how they're handling this good sun up here. Okay, check you later. All right, so here's the profile for today. As I mentioned, I was going to run independently a Sun 250 and then switch over at some point to the 250G uh, during the day. The uh, first thing I wanted to mention was the, uh, I showed you the labeling on the prior slides. And just be aware that the I have seen the 250G, which is supposed to be the lower power one, uh, also that same model number being used for the regular one. So if you're going to buy a Sun 250, make sure you look at the, what's advertised for the uh, voltage range and kind of ignore what model number they're using because this G doesn't necessarily mean that it's that particular one that I have. They used to be that way, but I still I see them now that uh, it's not that way, so something to be aware of. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, the power this morning was running at about 40 watts, and I was kind of wondering what's going on there because we had reasonably good sun. I went and checked one of my panels, which was an 80 watt mono crystalline panel, and it had snow on it on about 5% of it. It just had just blown in overnight. And once I cleared that off, we immediately doubled the power output. So any kind of obstruction, whether it's snow or leaves or uh, any kind of shadowing on this, on any of these solar panels, is it's like having a bad battery in series in a, in a flashlight. If you have one battery, one cell that's bad, there it's going to affect the output of the whole thing. So that was kind of an interesting, a little example there of how that can uh, show up in the in the readout. Anyway, you can see the power, once that was cleared, <coughs> ran right up through the 120 watts I've been running at up to the 140 spec level. And then we had some clouds come through. Then it was actually ramping up over 150. I thought at that point, okay, I'm, now that I got some good power, good sun, I'm going to switch over <coughs> to the uh, 250G. And then basically wanted to look at more closer up what's going to happen to the voltage and the current after that transition to see if I could see anything different. And you can see the rest of the day was kind of choppy. But uh, we had some amazing spikes here up to 180 watts measured. And uh, which, you know, it's, we didn't have like big cumulus clouds where you get the edge of the cloud effect. But you can tell you get some, you get, can get some pretty big surges through here on the input side on the uh, grid tie inverters. So if then now we'll go look a little closer here at just the volts and the amps. So here's our volts here, which looks kind of what we expect. Uh, it's actually it's actually a little high here, right? It's uh, pushing over 20 volts, even though the panels are have the the best power voltage at about 17.4 volts on these two panels that I got connected here in parallel. Uh, so the voltage is reading a little bit differently on this 250 than what we were seeing with the 250G uh, last week. In this case the MPPT is tracking between 14 and, and 20 volts, even up to 22 on one spike there and a couple more up to 22 
or 21 here uh, with that unit as it was trying to milk the power we got to this point and I switched over and you can see the current profile definitely was affected by that now some of this could have been the clouds through the day but you can see that nominally we we're pushing over 10 amps with the Sun 250G by itself at certain times today and, th and these are these are you know probably 10 15 minute periods of time here and then uh, later on the day you start to see this kind of oscillation that we noticed last week uh, when I was doing the same test so we get some oscillation in here but it's not necessarily the whole time and then the uh, end of the day the current coming off I want to I took a blue up at this little transition point here just to see <clears throat> what the voltage was looking like so this is a Sun 250 the regular 14 to 28 volt one at least the one I got anyway running more like what I we saw on the power jack 300 which is between 15 and 17 volts so this was very consistent with the what the power jack was doing and we're getting 8 amps and occasionally eking over 8 amps today mainly because we got some pretty powerful sun there and this was this this was about a 30 second period of time where I switched the input from one grid tie inverter to the other I completely took the 250 off and put the 250 G on and so we didn't have that much of a change of sun uh, through here you I mean the skies were clear but immediately saw the the amps getting stronger with the uh, 250g design so they have obviously some different MPP uh, tuning in that one that's favoring the amp output uh, and reducing the voltage down and this was the one if we go back to the last uh, chart where we were getting the oscillation this is where we were seeing it just like we were last week between uh, last week it was 12 volts and, and 17 here it's looks like it's between 13 and uh, 17 or so so anyway kind of interesting I mean there obviously was some cloud effect today but uh, Sure, certainly, you know, we are seeing a little bit here probably that was related to the change from one type of sun uh, unit to the to the other. That's it for today's show. Catch you later.